Hi folks, it's Ben and I'm here with my 1999 salt covered Chevy S10. Now a little bit earlier I did get an inspection sticker. I did have to replace a couple steering components and such. But since then I've developed a minor vibration between 25 and 35 miles per hour. Now if you don't have all sorts of mud and snow bumped in your wheels there, then probably the second thing that's happening is I've got a bad U-joint and that's on the drive shaft here. So first thing we've got to do is just pretty much inspect it to see if that's the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and jack the rear of this vehicle up and we're going to pull the drive shaft out and inspect those U-joints. Okay, I've got the battery undone for safety's sake. I got the rear of the truck up in the air and now I get to do my most favorite thing. I get to crawl underneath the vehicle in the dead of winter. I swear this is right up there with hitting my thumb with a hammer. <sighs> now, our drive shaft is right here. Uh, obviously goes into the rear end here. It's a pretty short shaft. Um, and it's got two U-joints on it. Uh, there's one up here, which could be bad. And this is the transfer case housing for the four-wheel drive. And then all the way down the shaft here, I have another U-joint back here. Very easy to remove. All you got to do is undo these two bolts. There are two more on the side there. A little prying action. This actually move the whole shaft moves forward. We can drop it and pull it right out. Okay, here's my drive shaft. Like I say, just came out just like, like it was. I uh, undid the little clamps back here pushed it forward, and as you can see back here, this is the part that goes into the transmission. It's very smooth in the machine. It's actually splined on the inside right there. This drive shaft actually has to move back and forth because as the rear of the vehicle goes up and down, it actually changes the distance between the transmission and that. So there's a little bit of play that has to be there. Now, this is our first U-joint, and if I pick it up here, put it on my, my foot here, it's nice and smooth. There's no play, no rocking. Uh, it's as you would expect a U-joint to be. It's, it's exactly right on the money. We'll come down to this one here. Uh, it's frozen. <laughs> it won't move at all. Uh, it's bound this way. And uh, I got a little bit of play here. But this thing should be a happy camper. It should want to spin and do everything it wants. Now usually it's the rear one. And this is the one farthest to the back. Because all that salt and road dirt just beats on this poor thing. So we've got to take it out. Now, it's an OEM, it's an original U-joint, as I'm looking at right now, and that means, <laughs> you see these two little dots right here? There's one here and one here. The factory, to, when it puts these in, actually uses a, a like a plastic nylon to actually lock it in, and you can't just press that out. You've actually got to heat it up so hot that it, it turns that little plastic into mush, and you've essentially got to squish it out if you will. Now, I got my tripod over here uh, so I'll tripod the camera so you can actually see these things when they actually do just pop. Well sorry for the edit for the actual uh, removal of the U-joint, uh, complications came up and I didn't really film it, but let me kind of demonstrate how we get a U-joint out of a drive shaft. Uh, here we have the end of the drive shaft and <clears throat> here we have a broken new one, uh, but I'm going to show you on it. But what we, what essentially how I get a, a U-joint out is I've got this vise here and you can see my drive shaft right here in the end uh, and this U-joint. Now normally these cups would be pressed in right here, but in order to get them out we've got to essentially hammer them out. At least that's how I do it. So I've got a socket right here. It's bigger than the actual cup, so it'll actually fall over here. With the other parts of the U-joint on the vise, I can then take this socket, take Mr. Hammer here, and just pound the hell out of this. And that'll force this <clears throat> U-joint to push its own cup out. So once you pop this side, you flip it over, and you do the other side, and you can get your U-joint out, very similar to this. Once you've got your U-joint out, <clears throat> or once I have mine out actually, then i got to clean the hole. Um, See if I can come up in close here. Inside there's actually a nylon ring and you can see where we kind of burnt it out and it came out of this hole. Uh, this has already been cleaned up but you want to take a file and just make sure there are no burrs in here. I'm going to clean out that gouge as well and then we're going to install our new U-joint uh, in this little area here. So let me clean out that little plastic um, and I'll be right back. Okay so here's my drive shaft all cleaned up. I put a little bit of grease on each side there to help the U-joint uh, slip in a little bit more because we're going to have to press it in. Now, in the U-joint kit, you get, of course, a brand new U-joint, all nice and pretty, with all its uh, four sides and stuff, and everything, once again, should be, you know, easy to turn. And we're going to be using clips. You know, the factory used that nylon product, but this one's actually going to use clips instead. 
Now these things usually come pre-greased, but there's no harm in actually adding a little bit more for my own, because once again, once you put this thing on, you're never pretty much getting it off again. So I generally add a little bit of my own, make sure everybody's nice and happy, and now we gotta press this thing in. The easiest way to do it, or actually the only way to do it, is to do it one, one, one cup at a time. So we'll take uh, one cup off here, and we'll have the other cup off here, and we'll actually work one in, and then we'll work the other. I moved to the ground because it's a little easier for me. Uh, but here we've got our first end cap on. And what we're looking to do, and see there's a groove right here? This is where our new retainer clip will actually snap on. Now our U-joint is still quite flexible because we don't have the other side in. And now we have to be careful because when we do this other side, we have to make sure that this remains nice and square and that everything remains happy. All right, and I'm done. Uh, this is my, just to kind of show you, this is my uh, ball joint press comes with a variety of tools and stuff, but it's just a convenient press. I've got a ratchet on the end of it. It's got a big hole on this end of it, so I, it actually just grips the outside of the drive shaft. It doesn't actually touch the center of the U-joint. And uh, it's just a matter of getting it in there and squeezing it lightly. Now, greasing these cups here on the outside makes everything a ton easier. We've still got nice, beautiful play that we didn't have before. we still got play this way. Now, you notice that these cups can still come out. I can actually lift that off. Uh, so when we actually go to install this thing, we'll actually install the other clips here and then when we bolt it up back to the axle uh, this will actually keep these cups in place as well. But we're ready, I gotta clean up the other end of the drive shaft here, we're actually ready to reinstall the drive shaft. Alright, we're back under the truck once again in the winter time. This is the uh, output of my uh, essentially my drive line. Uh, this connects to my transfer case and uh, on the drive shaft here I've uh, got my machine surface here and uh, I've lubricated it with some transmission fluid. And I've got my ball joint approximately the way it was uh, in the drive shaft yoke. So what I get to do now, let's try not to hit the camera with the drive shaft, and reinsert this thing back into the transmission. And see how it can slide like that? It's supposed to. Uh, like I said, there would be travel distance. Slide it up and then let me move the camera. All right, take two. I needed to do some prep work. Um, took a little uh, Dremel tool with a stone and cleaned up my cups here. Um, and also I re-greased them. That'll help ins insulate uh, installation a little bit. Uh, but now I can just hopefully slide this forward. The drive shaft's in the same orientation it was when I took it out, because uh, I have a sticker on the side that uh, pretty much tells where it's from. And those are in enough that I can now get my clamps on and kind of finish maneuvering them in on the way. Now my clamps look like this. And essentially, whoops, I got a hair on that one. Uh, they just bolt in like such and they hold the U-joint in that way. I won't bore you with me screwing them in. Okay, and that's it. Uh, I just slowly walk the U-joint the into the yoke here, uh, kind of equally tightening each one. Uh, until we're rested against the yoke, and that's it. That's a matter. That's how. It's not that tough. It's kind of a pain. It helps to have some specialty tools, uh, but that's how you change a U joint, uh, a rear U joint, I should say, on a 1999 Chevy S10. Oh, one more note before I go. Here's the old one, and uh, these are the needle bearings that are left. This other side didn't even have any. They were just a, a ball of mush, and even these here don't even ro uh, rotate. So. Uh, <laughs> Definitely a toasted unit. But if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment on the website, and I'll get back to you later.